Here is a one transistor CW QRP transmitter. What you're seeing now is the circuit. The unusual thing about it is its frequency agile. Instead of using a crystal, I'm using a ceramic resonator, which when you put a variable capacitor in series with it, you can pull the frequency over quite a large part of the 80 meter band. In this case, about the bottom 80 kilohertz or so of the band. That's good for the CW segment if you're using a 3.58 megahertz ceramic resonator. There is a bit of chirp, but it's not too objectionable. If you wanted to, and I suggest you do this first, you could put in a 3.58 megahertz crystal. Then when you're happy that's working, substitute either a crystal for the CW end of the band or a ceramic resonator. Now to describe some of the parts in a bit more detail, the transistor is a small signal NPN type. I used a BC548, though a 2N3904 would be okay. The LED is red and that provides a bit of bias, some voltage regulation. The coil, you see 10T to 4T, that's 10 turns to 4 turns, that is a ferrite toroid. It's actually a two hole binocular type and I've used enameled copper wire. One winding with 10 turns on the primary and another with four turns on the secondary. That provides an impedance step down to 50 ohm. The type of wire thickness is not critical. You just need to make sure that it's thin enough to go through the toroid. The box labelled LPF is low pass filter. That is needed to cut off all the harmonics. More on that later. In the meantime, this is the low pass filter that I use. Not only for this, but other QRP equipment. It's actually two filters in the one box, so I can do either 7 or 3.5 megahertz. Something I found, and you might find this too, I found the keying or the oscillation wasn't so good with this high value of capacitor, 4.7 nanofarad. If that's a problem for you, then drop it down to a lower value like 1 nanofarad. The capacitor here is just a variable capacitor from a transistor radio. If you don't have one, then try a selection of disk ceramic capacitors. You won't get the frequency agility but you will get some frequency variability at certain spot frequencies. So you might try 22 picofarad, 47, 100 picofarad and various in between values. But I do suggest if you can use a variable capacitor to get continuous coverage. The unit uses 12 volts on the supply line and I've just got the key in series with the ground though you can have it elsewhere in the circuit like even in the supply line or even in the emitter I've got it here teamed up with this low pass filter. That is switchable, either 3.5 or 7 megahertz. You'll see why that's useful later on. That makes it handy for various QRP rigs that I build. This circuit is a cut down version of the Reggie by AA1TJ. That was a transceiver.
that did the whole lot in one transistor. I've cut off the receiver portion, so I'm just using the transistor oscillator as a transmitter on its own. As to what it sounds like, here it is when it's going into a dummy load. Sometimes with these really simple QRP rigs, it can sound a bit different when you connect it to an antenna, despite the low pass filter. Here it is with the antenna connected. The frequency has shifted a little bit, a couple of hundred kilohertz, so I'll just do it again. Something I'll now demonstrate is how important the low pass filter is. As you just saw, I was transmitting on 3530. Now I'll transmit with the filter switched to 7 MHz. So if there is a harmonic, it should be quite strong. With the filter switched to 7 MHz, the harmonic on 7060 will go through to the antenna with no attenuation. Now I'm listening to VK5ARG's Kiwi SDR, about six or seven hundred kilometers away. This is in the middle of the day around 2 p.m. As you can hear, the harmonic is audible hundreds of kilometres away. When I flick the switch to 3.5, no transmission is heard on 7 MHz. So I thought that was worth demonstrating to show how a one transistor transmitter can put out significant harmonic energy. That is unless you've got a low pass filter attached on the right frequency. Not only that, but the signal is not audible on its fundamental frequency because propagation at this time of day doesn't support this sort of distance. This is an example of where a small QRP transmitter like this can be heard on its harmonic, but not on its main frequency, when the propagation conditions are favourable. This is just after 11 p.m. and I'm now listening on the VK5 ARG Web SDR.
This is VK3 JTM's Kiwi SDR. Efficiency is measured by power output divided by power input. A transmitter is basically a device that converts DC electrical energy into AC RF energy. Just having a look and we're getting a bit over 200 milliwatts output. The meter needle is just past two but that's actually a different scale. You have to divide it by 10 and that gives you 0.2 so just over 200 milliwatts. Using Ohm's law and a multimeter we first of all measure the voltage and it's 13.22 volts with the key down because the key is in the supply line I can put the multimeter probes across in current setting this time and I'm getting 34 milliamps we do the sums the amps times volts Note that I've converted the milliamps to amps. Do that by dividing by a thousand, and we get the result of just under half a watt. These are DC voltage measurements, near enough to 450 milliwatts DC input. Now we mentioned before, this was the formula for efficiency, power output divided by power input. It's expressed as a ratio or percentage. Putting in numbers we get 0.444 or 44%. That is quite good for an oscillator on its own you would expect higher efficiency from having a power amplifier stage that is purely an amplifier and not an oscillator, especially if it's in class C.